Okay, hello and welcome today's, to today's Power of the Pillar. I'm Candace. I'm the Program Assistant in the Education Department and I'll be facilitating today. These Power of the Pillar presentations are part of Lakeside Online, which is a way for the directors of each pillar to share information about the upcoming season. Today, my boss, John Mann, will share all he has planned for 2024. Um, I was planning on, before I handed it over to John, uh, to introduce Charles Allen, our CEO and president, for a welcome. I'm not sure, John, do you see if Charles has, has joined us? I haven't, I have not seen yet, no. Hmm, okay, well, Maybe we'll see, something. we'll see how that goes. Um, We'll, we'll work him in uh, if, if he's able to join us. Um, so I'll just go ahead and keep moving then. John, um, I know you have a great love for history and the details. And I know from personal experience, you really enjoy uh, researching and planning for the year. So are you ready? Would you like to share I, everything I, that we I, have been working I, on for 2024? I, I am, but it looks yeah. like Charles is entering. Oh, as okay. So this is good. Well. Hi, Charles. Hello. We, <laughs> we, have, intro we have introduced you, uh, and bam, there you are. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I was, uh, my computer had to reset. Yeah. Well, happy well Sunday, welcome. Everybody. Thank you. Well, just want to uh, let me just say before we get started here and just um, how uh, proud I am of our programming team and the season that they've laid out. Um, John and Candy, Candace are the uh, like the dynamic duo of education. <laughs> um, the Batman and Robin. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, uh, the Long Ranger and Tonto, you know, I can go on all the partnerships I can um, think of, but that's what comes to mind when I think of uh, John and uh, Candace and, and the work that they're doing in our education department. Um, as some of you know, um, with uh, Shirley moving on um, is, is uh, we've, we've hired um a uh, new person, which we'll be making an introduction out to everyone. Uh, they start, uh, he starts April 1st. Um, and then um, we have a new vice president of programming, um, which will also be starting April 1 as well. And so we'll look forward to having them all uh, to be part of the programming team to um, just, just mark out what a dynamic uh, team that this is. And um, um I see Charlie on here. He has uh, been very uh, instrumental in helping us uh, keep things together, representing this team at our senior team meetings and uh, and just leading uh, strong. Uh, and so we're grateful for each and every one of them and all those that have uh, led uh, prior to them coming on. And so I hope to see everybody around campus um, this uh this season, and I would say uh, I know it's so much to to try to take in, but uh, if you can make it to every education series, and um, and you can make it to all the preachers of the week and all the Hoover shows, uh, I think you'll be in for a treat. Um, and I wish we had punch cards, and if you can bring me your punch card and making every last one of F. John's education series. I think he's going to buy every, he's going to buy whoever makes all of them, he'll buy them ice cream or something. So. <laughs> Sounds great, but there goes my budget. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. And I just want to say, um, uh, thank you to John and Candace again for all the hard work they're putting in into this uh, season. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Um, you know, Candace, for the introduction and Charles for um, for the very kind words. And I am thrilled to be um, well, to be the, the director of education, frankly, and putting this season together. Um, this will be my fourth fourth summer season in, in education. 
and um, next month it'll be 10 years that I've been with Lakeside. So it's uh, it's amazing how quick uh, time goes by. But uh, as that, that first slide that, that you saw for a couple moments, um, um, I've done it. Show, you did it. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Well, um, this first first slide, you know, I think a lot of people think with education that it's it's the lecture series, and that is the 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 keystone, if you will, of the department. But there are many things that other series that goes into education. So this is just a quick um, quick drop down of of everything. And we'll be going through most of this um, in the next um, next 50 minutes or so. And I guess, Candace, if you want to move to the, the next slide, the total solar eclipse. This is something that we are very excited for, especially <laughs> Candace and I in education. Um, Weekend programming coming up will be on Friday, April 5th in the evening. And the programming will last until, um, and well, until Monday the 8th following the eclipse. The eclipse itself will occur at 3, 12, and 21 seconds uh, p.m. here in Lakeside. Uh, but then following the eclipse, uh, we will have um, uh, Spencer Eller, for instance, down at the bandstand with music. And the and shuffleboard will be going. Putt, mini uh, putt putt will be going. I believe tennis will be too. And I'm only plugging those other departments because the the idea is that the mass of people following the eclipse will then all get on the roads and leave at the same time. Which, as you can imagine, traffic could be snarled. So you know, I might as well just kick back, relax here in Lakeside for a little bit longer and then get on the roads when the traffic has kind of dispersed. But um, backing up, um, other than this being a lifetime event for our area, um, Lakeside was selected by the Great Lakes Science Center in Cleveland to be one of 30 viewing communities. And we, we applied and we were lucky enough to be selected. Um, and there was a total, I believe, uh, 70 to 80 communities that applied for it, but we were fortunate that we we were chosen. Um, so some of the highlights in education, I'll have a speaker, Adam Gannon from NASA, who'll be talking on space communications. Uh, we'll have a historic portrayal of Sally Ride. Um, there'll be movies, there'll be a documentary, along with a whole host of programs. And really, all of that can be found on the website. And I know marketing was busy um, putting together uh, actual like leaflets that will be passed out at the, the South and the Fifth, Fifth Street Gate uh, on designated times. All that information can be found on the website. And it really is going to be something to behold. So just Cross your fingers that it's not raining and blowing or maybe snowing. Um, but other than that, if it's like the weather it is currently outside my window, it'll be gorgeous. Um, kind of moving on to other preseason programs, um, Biggest Week in Birding will return um, for my, in my programming anyways uh, from May 6th through the 11th. And... Um, Last year, it was very successful. It was the first time we'd actually done programming for Birding Week since 2013. And um, it was popular. You know, some of the things that we learned, or that I learned, are, um, you know, specific topics. Um, that, so certain topics, you know, birders are very interested in. Other topics, not so much. So that really helped me in, in adjusting um, for uh, for birding week um, coming up, and um, you know this slide just shows you know some of the the program titles that we, will be offered, and all those programs will be in the evening at 7 p.m. There is one bird walk that I think it's on Thursday at 10:30, but 
But other than that, everything's in the evening. The idea being birders, you know, want to get up early in the morning and they want to go see the birds. And then, you know, come back to Lakeside, get a bite to eat, and then take in, take in a lecture and then get ready for, for the next day. Um, and then moving along, kind of we'll be looking at the total offerings in education again. And I just want to give like a, like a, just a sentence or a little blurb for each one of those. Um, you know, of course, the lecture series, you know, kind of speaks for itself being the keystone of the department. Um, but then moving on to the keynote series, um, last season, it was, it was pretty successful. Um, in the past, we would do maybe one or two keynotes. Um, but last year being the, um, you know, the big one 50th, you know, we really wanted to have a, you know, huge offering in education. That was the keynote series. For this season, instead of having them primarily on Tuesdays, we're moving them to Thursdays. And um, last year, I want to say we had 13 keynotes, and we kind of reduced the number down a little bit. Um, and the idea being is having the keynotes primarily during the busiest times here in Lakeside. So they'll be running from mid-June until mid-August. Um, trivia, of course, um, that runs every nine months of the year uh, on Mondays at 5 p.m. And in the in the um, well, in the off season, I'm conducting an ooh la la. But then during the summer season, of course, I'm on Walnut Plaza, and um, that that has been a fun fun uh, series. So uh, that continuing that continuing that moving forward, um, Science Rocks, you know, that'll be returning for its fourth season. And if you're not sure what that is, it's a hands-on learning um, experience for youth when it comes to science. Um, the envir environmental series you know, brings top speakers on various environmental topics. And then it ranges from, well, for this year, uh, blonde, brown field cleanup to the top 10 things to build a net zero home. So it's, it's quite wide ranging. Um, our historic portrayal series, um, last year, that was very popular, you know, for the 150th. So this year, it, it's returning, and the time and location has changed. It'll be on Monday evenings and primarily at the bandstand, and that'll be in June and August. In the month of July, we'll have some different programming on Monday evenings. Um, get growing or ask the gardener. You know, this year it's being led by Kyle Buter. Um, he's the new director of horticulture and grounds. And so I'll talk a little bit more on Get Growing. That is, of course, a very popular program, a thriving program. Uh, the weekly, weekly wellness lectures, um, those are put together in a partnership with recreation and wellness. Those will continue on Fridays at Dracut Hall. Um, World Affair Forum, of course, that also is on Fridays. That program has been in, in existence, I think, since 2007. So it's been around a long time. Uh, this year, its moderators will be Bob Brunken and Lynn Hudson. Um, they were the moderators last year. They had a great dynamic, worked well. It's a, it's a, it is a great program, especially with, I mean, world affairs is always, there's always something going on around the world. Um, moving on to the pre-concert lectures. Um, this year we'll have four sessions uh, and they always occur, you know, prior to the symphony for that evening. They will be in late July, early August, you know, same time as the symphony. Uh, and endowment programs, so there's there's two. Um, there's the Lucille and Verl Smith Endowment and for Historic Preservation. And that one has been around for quite a while. Um, and, and yearly or annually, there's a session or two sessions on historic preservation, and those are paid through their endowment. New for this year will be the Jake Knees Endowment. And uh, if you're unaware, Jake was a, was a lakesider. 
who passed away unexpectedly. And his um, family and friends, they, uh, they banded together and they, produce, they collected enough, create this endowment in his memory. Um, and his, the programs, will, they're to focus on first responders um, and also um, oh, organ uh, transplants. So for this year, uh, to kick it off, um, Dr. Charles Modlin of the Cleveland Clinic, uh, he will be here in early August and he'll give a session on kidney trans, uh, transplant. So it should be it should be a very uh, a very good um, lecture. Char uh, Dr. Charles Modlin has been here in the past. Um, special exhibits for this year. Or the, is the Mazza Museum, uh, Museum of the Great Lakes, Historical Maritime Art, um, just just a few, and I'll be kind of getting into those a little bit a little bit later. Um, we'll be having some field trips again this year. Um, I know last year we had a number of field trips um, in well June, both June, July, and August, and we kind of found that the ones in July had kind of a lower attendance. And I and kind of learning from that, seemingly, and I guess I should have realized this, but when people arrive at Lakeside, they want to stay at Lakeside. They really don't have an interest, so to speak, in leaving the grounds. But the ones in June and August had a little bit more of attendance. So there will be a few a few trips this year um, to the Hayes Museum and Library. There'll be a behind the scenes tour of that facility. And it's just down the road in Fremont, uh, a hard hat tour of the Colonel James M. Schoonmaker Museum ship, the Museum Tug, Ohio, and the St. Mary's Challenger Pilot House. Um, those items are um, they're on display in Toledo at the uh, National Great Lakes Museum. And, um, you know, working with the museum, um, putting together a hard hat tour. So you literally are wearing a hard hat and you are going into areas of those uh, vessels that are off pretty much off limits off the tour. So that should be that should be a lot of fun. Um, also, the uh, prairies at uh, NASA Armstrong test facility We're working on a, um, a field trip at that at that facility that is in Sandusky so just on the other side of the bay. Um, I always want to put a, sh a shout out to uh, community groups and programs. Uh, the community groups here at Lakeside really put together a lot of quality programming. The Lakeside Heritage Society, you know, their, the Sunday lectures, those will continue uh, at 1.30 in Orchestra Hall. Uh, the Chautauqua Movement sessions uh, that are on Wednesdays. Um, and then, of course, they also have different tours of of lakeside whether it's the hotel lakeside or uh, east east west lakeside different quadrants um they really have a quality programs um less of course they are also they also have some good programs and then for the for the second year they'll be doing a electric vehicle display um, down at the Pavilion Circle. And then, of course, also the tree walks. Those will be going on as well. And kind of lastly on this slide, um, I want to highlight the Rhine Center uh, for the arts. You know, it falls under the education pillar. And for this year, it's celebrating its 25th anniversary. Um, so <laughs> where did the time go? But uh, that's just a snapshot of kind of all the things in in the education pillar and it's i think sometimes some, some items kind of get lost along the way so i just want to give a highlight to them. um but moving on to the theme weeks which are you know i think that's the big thing that people look for anyways um the, i'm gonna be we'll be taking these kind of in five week um snapshots you know instead of just doing you know all of them at the same time so um, the week one will be uh, images in historic paintings. 
And I wanted to highlight Rustin Levinson and Marcia Steele. Um, when I been, when I began searching for speakers, that I, you know, I, I always use Lakesiders suggestions and connections. Um, and I wanted to highlight both of them for, you know, their assistance in putting together the speakers for the week, and then for also presenting. I want to say I reached out to Rustin uh, to begin with, Rusty, and just her ideas, you know, what she'd be willing to. And uh, she was like, oh yeah, I'd be, I'd be thrilled. Let me reach out to Marsha. And um, within like a couple of weeks, I had week one. So it was, it was wonderful. Believe me, it was wonderful. Week two is Wild West week. And this week was uh, the one Candace really put together. So I kind of want to hand off to Candace. Ah, thank you, John. Yeah. Um, yeah. First of all, you know, thank you for, for asking me to, you know, put together and get some ideas together for this week. And when you think of Wild West, you know, you think of explorers, native peoples, forced removal, rich resources. So we try to, to cover all that, but the program that I really wanted to highlight um, for this week is the historical portrayal of the Ponca nation chief standing bear um there's been a lot um about uh standing bear uh over the last couple of years a couple different documentaries uh, his statue was placed in the u.s capitol uh, in 2019 and he was really a crusader for justice so um i doing research uh i found taylor keen who's been presenting uh, the chief in the Chautauqua lecture style since 2012. Uh, we invited him. He said yes. And so we're really thrilled that he'll be um, putting on this historical portrayal on Thursday morning uh, at the bandstand at 1030. Uh, he's a professor and a lecturer at uh, Creighton University in Nebraska. And um, it's just like I said, it it's I think it's going to be the highlight of a really great week for me. I agree. It it'll be it's going to be pretty cool. Um, moving on to week three, celebrate Ohio, and that's presidential museums. So this is kind of in 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 my in my mind, I can have a theme week like for a number of years that's celebrating Ohio. But something a little bit different. You know, last year it was ex, um, exploring creativity, and this year it's presidential museums. It's kind of a good fit since it's election year. But the uh, Rutherford Hayes uh, Presidential Library will be presenting uh, on Monday Rutherford's Travels Out West, which is kind of a nice tie between week two and week three. Uh, and then, of course, also they'll be conducting a behind the scenes tour of their facility on Friday of that week. Um, moving on to week five, we'll, oh, I'm sorry, week four, um, will be America's veterans after the conflict. So Jacob Smith, he's the executive director for the Lorraine County Veteran Affairs he is a veteran, and uh, he's been gathering veterans from from the different some of the different conflicts from Korea um, to uh, current veterans um, in um, I Iraq and um, Afghanistan, and those different sessions will um, will be you know you know talking with the veterans, kind of their recollections of life once they returned stateside after, you know, whatever conflict it was. Um, when I plan each year, typically I would have a, a different war kind of highlighted. Last year was the Civil War. It was a very popular week. The year before that was World War II. And for this year, I, instead of highlighting a specific conflict, I want to kind of look at the veterans themselves, you know, when they returned what was like life like? So that's that was the, the reason behind that week. Um, moving on next is journalism and media literacy week. Um, Hans Meyer, um, he is a professor with the E.W. Scripps School of Journalism at Ohio University. 
he's going to have uh, two sessions on media literacy and algorithms and social media engagement. And that should be quite interesting. You know, journalism has been really in flux for a number of years. You know, media literacy, you know, it, it it's very it's very important for our, you know everyday lives. So this should be a very interesting week. And of course, I'm just kind of highlighting some of the maybe in my mind high points of speakers. I'll be a number of speakers through the weeks. Um, the next kind of grouping of five uh, you have listed right here, but kind of moving on to. Um, preserving Democracy by the People Week. Uh, this will be the week of uh, July 4th. So July 1st through through the 5th um, is this theme week to kind of give you an idea where in the calendar I am. And um, Paul Beck, he's a professor emeritus and academy professor of political science at the Ohio State University. Uh, he's given uh, talks here in Lakeside in the past and he's written on uh, voting behavior, political parties, uh, public opinions. Um, so that should be that should be pretty pretty interesting. Um, also that week, uh, Maureen O'Connor, uh, who served as the Chief Justice of the Ohio Supreme Court from 2011 to 2022, and also an Associate Justice from 2002 to 2010, she'll be joining us that week too. And her topic in particular for that week will be uh, gerrymandering issues in the state of Ohio. Um, the next week, the common good, um, John Edgar, and he is a shared speaker with Religious Life, and his, his book, A Front Porch for All People, uh, tells a story of rebuilding neighborhoods, and his emphasis is strong on inclusion, and building on people's strengths. Uh, the next week, week eight, artificial intelligence um, seems to be a topic that's everywhere nowadays. Um, one speaker, uh, William Hart Davidson, he'll be talking on changes for teachers and students in education. And also with AI, the possibility of it accomplishing the work of professionals and creative class workers. Um, you know, we'll see. Will, will we see you know, similar layoffs as manufacturing and service sector jobs had in the past? Um, and there's a number, another uh, other uh, interesting speakers that we, but artificial intelligence seemingly it changes by the day. So that should be a, that should be a fun week. Uh, moving on to week nine is television history and future. Um, Max Grubb, um, he's spoken previously here at Lakeside, and the, the week he had before was on how radio changed the world. But this, the sessions this season will, will cover how television changed the world and what is its future. Um, moving on to week 10 will be Lakeside Gardening Experience. Um, one speaker, Barbara Walker, uh, is a, prof a professor at the University of Cincinnati. She's going to be talking on the mental and physical benefits of living with nature. Her talk will focus on the healing power of nature and why you should uh, integrate more into your daily routine. And frankly, I try and do that every day at lunchtime, you know, here now in the off season, you know, just taking a walk around Lakeside, you know, getting, taking a walk up to either Chautauqua Woods or along the waterfront. And it really does help kind of get the uh, cobwebs out of the mind, so to speak. Um, week 11 um, is Latin America Labor and Migration Condition Week. But for that, that's another week that uh, Candace has been working on. So I'm going to pass it to Candace. Thank you, John. Uh, yeah, this was a, a week, uh, as John mentioned, uh, we always get uh, good recommendations from the community. And this was one of the weeks that we received several great recommendations for speakers. And uh, Giada Ferrucci came about by a recommendation. She's a PhD student at Western University in Ontario, Canada. And she's been studying environmental justice, activism, sustainability, economic development, and 
those all of those topics have really come together uh, for the two presentations she'll be giving that week. One is on tracing the impacts of U.S. activism uh, in Central America. And the other one is called Flowing Together, um, Uniting El Salvador in Michigan in the Fight for Water Justice. So really, she's drawing parallels between El Salvador and Michigan and the water crisis. So I'm just really looking forward to those. Thank you, Candace. Yeah, that sure. does sound like a good week. Um, week 12, we're starting to get kind of close to the end of uh, the Chautauqua season, but local food sourcing. So Therese Moran, a professor at Ohio University, will talk on the benefits of growing a regional food system with local producers and also the negative health outcomes of e eating ultra-processed foods. Um, the uh, next week, week 13, is documentary week and have a, a number of documentaries lined up, but this one in particular, um, JFK, The Last Speech. It explores the friendship between uh, President Kennedy and uh, poet Robert Frost. Uh, President Kennedy's final speech inspired a group of college classmates you know, that heard his speech and uh, how it altered the course of their lives. Um, and then a few weeks later, he was gone. So it was it, it it's a it was a really good documentary. So that's why I wanted to highlight that one in particular. And then lo and behold, it's week fourteen, Lakeside University, and uh, for this this is kind of the time for Lakesiders to to shine uh, behind the lectern instead of you know out in the audience. So I have uh, you know a few um, few Lakesiders lined up for that week, but. Um, I do have some uh, openings, so if you're interested, um, send me um, send me an email, give me a call, stop by my office. I'm usually always here um, during the day, and a lot of coworkers will attest to that. I particular some in some cases live in my office. So those are the main theme weeks. Um, so I'm pretty excited about those. Um, but moving on to the keynote speakers slash concerts. So keynote series was well received last year. And with what we learned, we made you know a few changes for this upcoming season, um, concentrating the overall numbers to the busier portion of the calendar year. Um, also moving them to Thursdays instead of Tuesdays. Um, something I like to highlight are the Lakesiders who had connections with some of these individuals and made contacts for us. You know, this is extremely appreciated and it really helps open avenues and make these speakers possible. Um, the uh, keynote concert concept, it's uh, new. And while keynotes you know, are typically a lecture format, um, this isn't always the case, and uh, these uh, two keynotes in particular um, will be a mixture of a song and a message. Um, for the keynotes, I really didn't highlight the in particular ones. I mean, they're 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 all wonderful. They're all wonderful, and if they their information isn't on the website yet, it will be soon. Believe me, we're. As soon as I get the information in, I'm saying it's marketing and then marketing is uploading it. So the if you look at the calendar and you're like, some of the items that John's talking about aren't on the calendar yet, but it's making its way. So please be patient. Um, I'd kind of like to move on to some special programs for this upcoming year. And the uh, University of Finley's Maza Museum uh, the Maza Museum, it's the world's largest collection of original artwork by children's book illustrators. And uh, their goal is to promote literacy and enrich the lives of all people through the art of picture books. And uh, this is a new series uh, for this year. Um, there will be uh, different presenters uh, for each session, and they will occur uh, Tuesdays at 2 p.m. from late June the 25th until late July the 30th. 
And uh, these sessions, they're geared to individuals K through adult. So this should be, should be a pretty, it should be fun. It should be interesting. It's a story and then it's creating something that goes along with the story. Um, so something a little different for this year on Mondays, we have um, Science Rocks. And then on Tuesdays for the kids, we'll have um, um, the Mazda Museum sessions. But Science Rocks, um, it's led by Danbury educator, Thomas DeHaas, and Sandusky City Schools educator, Kelly Summers. And they're geared for families, children ages six to 12, roughly. Uh, they occur on Mondays at two, and they run from June 10th through August 12th. And it's, it's fun, it's hands-on science. You know, whether they're um, fishing for evasive species off the dock and catching gobies, or if they're making ice cream, or if they're making like, like a Play-Doh called Oblek, you know, it's, 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 it's science, it's fun, but it's also educational. Um, moving along to the environmental series, um, this series, it runs on Tuesdays at 1.30, brings top speakers on various environmental topics. Um, and for this series, I also work closely with Les um, concerning, you know, various speakers. And I, you know, right now it's listed, you know, all the different speakers and the dates, you know, what they're coming. So it's kind of neat. You can kind of see all the different variable topics. But I want to put a plug in for uh, less and their electric vehicle display that will be back again for this year it occurs on Tuesdays from two to four in the pavilion circle and it's really a great time to talk with the car owners themselves view the vehicles ask them questions and just see if you know these electric vehicles that we keep hearing about are they all that what do they look like how do they ride how do they charge so we can actually talk to the people that own them. So that's a that's a really cool, it's fun series, uh, brought um, brought to us by Les. So historic portrayals is it's coming back again this year. Um, again, it'll be on Mondays in the evenings, and I or we did our best to make sure that the the portrayal matched the theme week. Uh, not always, but we we did our we did our best, and a good portion of the portrayals are actors from the Cleveland area, so they're they're regional, um, they're quality, and they're they're a lot of fun. So that it's another another great series um, that I'm looking forward to this year. Um, but get growing. Um, that session, it was begun by Loretta Wilkin and Jean Mario Kart. Um, as best as I can remember off the top of my head, either 2015 or 2016. And it is a thriving program. And this season, uh, Kyle Buter, who is our director of horticulture and grounds, he'll be leading it. Um, program will, be, be, will continue to be offered every Thursday at 1.30 in the train station starting June 13th and running through August 15th. Um, Kyle is uh, working with a prairie restoration expert, John Blakeman, for a field trip to the beautiful prairies located at NASA Armstrong Test Facility in Sandusky. And if you're thinking, what does NASA and prairies have anything together, coupled together, they they really do. The facility itself was originally was originally um, a, a TNT factory complex during the Second World War. It's hundreds of acres in size, and NASA only uses a small portion of it. Um, in fact, if you look on any Google map of the Sandusky area, and you see a a forest that has very straight lines for no particular reason, that is NASA and the prairies that are around it. So it is a, it's just a fascinating um, place, frankly. The field trip 
It's going to take place sometime at the end of August. You know, we're kind of dialing in those dates. You know, keep an eye out for the official date as well for more information on how to sign up for the trip. Some other uh, special exhibits or events. Um, these are in uh, collaboration with the National Museum of the Great Lakes in Toledo. And we begin the season with a historic maritime art collection that will be on display in Hoover Auditorium from Memorial Weekend till Sunday, June 15th. And it's gonna be running during Images and Historic Paintings Week. Now that's in week one. So it's kind of a, it's a, it's a great way, you know, collaborating with a regional uh, museum and also tying in a theme week. Um, also during the Lakeside Wooden Boat Society Boat Show, the museum will have a portion of their collection on display under the tent on the hotel lakeside front lawn from Friday to Sunday. Um, every every year during, well, for the last, hmm, this may be the fourth, third or fourth year, we, during the boat show, I've been trying to working with, um, whether it's a museum or some, a museum or organization to have part of their collection on the lawn to kind of, you know, give a little bit more, you know, just something, another added feature to the uh, Wooden Boat Society's boat show. Um, so, so for this year, it's the National Museum of the Great Lakes. Next year, who knows? We'll find out. Um, and then to end the season, a hard head tour of the vessels uh, which are on display will occur on Tuesday, August 27th. Um, for that, there will be a need to register for that session. Uh, all registered classes, um, our goal is to be posted on the website by May 15th. Um, so that is some of the special events and exhibits coming up. Um, but frankly, I, I have been kind of going on for about 45 minutes or so. But if you have any questions, you know, feel free to put those into the um, into the chat, and hopefully, I can get an answer to you as quick as uh, quick as I can. I don't see any questions, John. So, um, you know, we only had a couple more slides, and it was um, to remind folks that we've uh, been recording the sessions, and we have them available on our stream channel, and also uh, on our YouTube channel. There's a, a slide for that. Um, so, anything else that you wanted to to chat about for the year? Any? Anything, anybody? Not a question, a comment? We're happy. We're happy to get comments too. No, okay. Well, no. Um, let me, um, if anybody can think of anything they want to ask, well, let me just go back and just share this last screen, um, which uh, shows some addresses here. Um, let's see. Yeah, so uh, this is the address for the stream channel uh, where the Lenten study program has been going on. It's been really fabulous. I've been doing it myself. I've been enjoying that. And there's one more one more week, I believe, of Lenten study. Uh, you can there they become available on Wednesday evenings at seven thirty. But you can you know uh, it, what's so nice is that they're recorded and you can go back and um, participate uh, anytime. Um, so Charlie Yost and um, Charles Allen, um, they participate and also uh, Michael Schertz and in the music. It's really a nice presentation. Um, and the other pillars that we've had so far um, are also available um, there and on the YouTube channel. And I have a picture of the Rhine Center there um, because there was also another presentation this year uh, going over um, some things that you can expect. Uh, to happen uh, during the 25th anniversary of the Rhine Center. Um, one or, uh, let's see, some of the different messages that come through. Um, yes, and uh, future programs, um, suggestions, and also presenters, yes, please email me um, if it's during the season or well, anytime and you come across me on the street pull me aside um frankly 
the theme weeks and uh, some of the some a good portion of the presenters, I find out through Lakesiders. Lakesiders, you know, they come to the different sessions. They'll say, "Hey, you know, John, did you ever think about this? Or what about if you cop, you know, would take a look at that? Or there's this one presenter. Wow, are they great? You really ought to see if they would be able to come to Lakeside. And sometimes, you know, don't let um just because you think, oh gosh, they're they're hundreds of miles away. They would never travel to Lakeside. Don't be too sure, you know, or don't sell yourself short. You know, just let me know because when I reach out to different presenters, I'm it's not just um a a, a speaking gig, if you will. It's you know talking about all that Lakeside has to offer. And usually they're, you know, people are like, what kind of place is this? And it's like, it's not your typical going to maybe like a library to give a talk. There's a lot more, well, you know this, a lot more to Lakeside. So um, yeah, please let me know. And if the presenter isn't able to travel here, they can do it virtually. They can do it virtually through Orchestra Hall. And we can have, you know, taking a just a dy dynamic speaker. All right. I didn't see. Um, there was just a few other comments about things that people enjoyed um, uh, about the programming and, and nothing else come in. So, John, I don't know if you you have some final words and then we'll let everyone go for the day. Okay. Well, um, I hope you stop by any of the uh, educational sessions that we have. Um, one of the things that made Chautauqua unique and in its founding was the education aspect to uh, programming. So between religious life, education, and then recreation, of course, arts, entertainment, the, the four pillars, that's what makes the Chautauqua what it is. So we're very fortunate to be in, in this space to take on all four pillars. So, you know, next, next month, will be Cuddleen Dormitorfi, and she'll have her power of the pillar on recreation on Sunday, April 28th. And I hope you, turn, hope you tune in. And before you know it, it's gonna either be the eclipse, or birding week, or Memorial Day, and then the party starts. And it keeps on going till Labor Day. So that's all I have. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you at the eclipse, John and everyone else who will, who will be attending. Bye-bye. See you later. And thank you.